what up it's guru jojo and in this particular video i'm just gonna be speaking about the differences between what people would say being consciously aware versus being unconsciously aware or just living strictly in your subconscious or simply just being woke versus being unwoke and obviously people say this has to do with your third eye which you know it does but a lot of it has to do i think with like the pituitary gland and all that other stuff but in this particular video i wanted to speak on specific examples and theories that are related to these differences so in general people associated with being woke usually with like people that are more rebellious like they take like a little bit of an opposite approach to life they're able to see things that other people can't see they're able to bring awareness you know to people who may seem to be just like living everyday mundane life and not really being so consciously aware of the things that's going on because they kind of just follow the stream they follow these constructs and we can all get stuck in this nature and you know this helps to keep society organized and focused so it is a benefit to society in a sense but where it's not a benefit um, I'm going to explain and this is the reason why this video is going to be beneficial because in a sense it is important to keep people in a state of operating through their subconscious but at the same time it is also quite important for people to become more consciously aware because the lack of consciousness is actually causing a lack of improvement in our society and the reason why is because what's happening is people are strictly living by like a bystander effect by like a just world phenomenon what i mean by this is that people are simply just seeing things for how it is and they're not actually realizing how they can implement change you know a lot of times it takes one person to start something to make people realize oh maybe i should do that too and then boom you can create improvement but the problem is that people are strictly living in their unconscious their subconscious meaning by this what i mean is that they're strictly just being influenced by what already is so for example this is the reason why things like racism was able to stay you know living for so long because it's one of those things where if you see how a certain group of people are being treated and you're constantly seeing that type of interaction between one group of people and another group of people what's happening is people are just seeing that and they're just blending in with that vibration instead of actually seeing wait hold on this is actually wrong why is this happening you see this is the problem with today's society is that people just kind of see the way an environment is functioning and they simply just they just follow it they just adapt with it you know and this is where the issues are a better example i can give is like think of something like Think of something like, you know, you go to a movie theater or something like that. The movie theater is messy. Um, it's dirty. It's filthy, right? What people normally do, people that are not really that consciously aware, people that are not woke, okay? They will point out that this movie theater is dirty. This movie theater is filthy, okay? Because there's popcorn on the floor. You know, the floor is sticky because people have dropped their soda and the employees didn't really clean it up, you know? And, you know, people will mention it. They'll be like, oh, this movie theater is dirty. It's filthy, like, ew. And so what will happen is this movie theater will continue to be dirty and filthy because people choose to blend in with that vibration. So people tend to treat the the environment the way that it already is so then they're throwing popcorn on the floor just for no reason they notice that they're more um clumsy and they're allowing their soda to spill you know what i'm saying they go to the bathroom and they're not they're not even being as sanitary in the bathroom because the bathroom's dirty so it's like instead of actually becoming consciously aware to realize hmm, maybe i should be more clean in this environment that's dirty like maybe i should make sure i throw out my popcorn so i don't further contribute to the issue rather than actually blending in with the issue and causing the issue to not get any better but you're actually making it just as worse 
that's the problem with today's society. People function in a way in which they contribute further to the issue. Like you see something is wrong and you continue to behave and interact within that vibration of wrongliness. I don't even know if that's a word, but you get what I'm trying to say. It's just the weirdest thing. I never understood this. I've seen this like, you know, my whole entire life and especially in college and stuff. Um, you know, I was going to Rutgers University and I lived in New Brunswick. I lived in off campus housing and it was off campus on campus. It was off campus, but you can only live in this building if you went to Rutgers. So it was like an in-between kind of energy. So anyways, boom. Um, so I had the opportunity to, you know, be surrounded by more of the people who lived within the city of New Brunswick, m more of the actual, um, you know, residences of New Brunswick rather than just the students that went to Rutgers University at the time. So um, I've seen a lot of things. There's a lot of homeless people in New Brunswick. Um, and a lot of them were just, not always homeless actually, some of them I think were just, you know, whatever it was. Like I remember one time someone came up to me and they said, they could have been homeless, you know what I'm saying? They always have like a story or something like that. But I remember he said that he needed to take the train and he didn't have enough money and blah, 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 blah. So I gave him like a couple dollars. And, and then the crazy thing is the next day he told me the same story, like, because I would walk to the gym sometimes or I would walk to class rather than taking the bus if it was especially like a sunny day outside or something like that and so I would run into a lot of these people and whatever so anyway besides the point um I never forget this guy told me a story about you know something happened he missed the first train and now he got to pay additional money and his credit card wasn't working and blah, blah, blah. I said okay and I had gave him like five dollars or something like that and then Either a day or two later, he came up to me near the same area with the same story. And I was like, you just told me the same story the other day. And my look doesn't really change much. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I looked pretty much the same. I was walking in the same area. He didn't even remember. And that's how I knew, like, okay, this dude is just bullshitting, you know? But he was... He told me the same story and I was just like, you just told me that the other day and I gave you money. He was like, oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> you know, on a positive note, there was another story where I actually dropped my credit card and a homeless man tapped on my back and gave it back to me. Never mind. now that I think of it, he probably assumed that by returning my credit card that I would exchange him back in cash or something like that. At the time, I didn't think of that. I was like, wow, he's really nice for returning the card. But now I have a new thought. Just a thought. So, you know, you can't really judge a book by its cover. So anyways, um, besides the point, there was this one time when I was walking to class. So I was walking towards the other direction. So I was walking towards the direction where you know, it starts to get to the Rutgers campus. And um, I remember there was this guy, this African-American male just like laying down on the floor, like the concrete floor um, by like the public safety building over there. And it was a cold day. It was like in November or something like that. It was chilly outside, I remember. And um, I remember just like seeing him there and I remember just seeing everybody just passing him, just passing him. And he was like saying something, but you couldn't really decipher what he was saying. Cause it was just like mumble jumble, just like, yeah, like he wasn't really saying anything. So you could tell he was like on something or something like that, or it could have been cold or a combination of both. So anyways, he was just laid out with his big ass puffy coat, like on the flipping concrete. And I remember, just like standing by him and just like looking at him and I pulled out my phone this other girl next to me pulled out her phone too we were the first two people to actually start to react to this situation rather than follow everyone else and walk away now I understand that we learn you know especially when we're younger you know don't talk to strangers just kind of ignore things and you know when you're very very young yes this is important to do because we don't have that proper discernment skills. We haven't really developed 
much yet, especially in our prefrontal cortex area that doesn't develop until like after the age of 18, like fully. And then if you drink alcohol or do drugs, this even um, prevents the development even further. So anyways, you know, your rational mind is not developed yet. So it makes sense. But as you get a certain age, you have a pretty good rational mind. You should be able to be able to make these judgments for yourself at this point. So I'm like, you know, this guy is just laying here and he's not getting up. So, you know, I was glad that she stopped too to get her phone because I actually had places to go. And that's the thing too, you know, unfortunately, a lot of these people that are passing him by, they needed to go to class and a lot of people didn't play around with their classes. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, you get grades deducted if you get to class late and people don't care if you have a story and stuff. They don't give a shit. These teachers, these professors don't care. So I understood that. But other people, you could tell they're walking slow, laughing with their friends and stuff. They didn't have no place to go. But, you know, I believe this is called a bystander effect. And I'm actually going to get the definition right now to make sure that I'm correct about that. So, yeah. Um, so the bystander effect defined by psychology today, it says the bystander effect occurs when the presence of others discourages an individual from intervening in an emergency situation against a bully or during an assault or other crime. The greater the number of bystanders, the less likely it is for any one of them to provide help to a person in distress. People are more likely to take action in a crisis when there are few or no other witnesses present. So it's basically like a thing where you know somebody could be in danger but there's a strong possibility that people won't actually react to this situation of danger if other people are just like walking past and not reacting to it, it has something to do with like you know crowd theory and all that stuff and see it says like why do people fail to help in an emergency situation it says it's natural for people to freeze or go into shock when someone when seeing someone have an emergency or being attacked this is usually a response to fear the fear that you are too weak to help that you might be misunderstanding the context and seeing a threat where there is none or even that intervening will put your own life in danger so this is the issue today is stuff like pranks people don't know really what's real people don't know what to detect and that's the problem is people care too much about certain things people today they care too much about being embarrassed they care too much about things that really doesn't matter that much the only thing you should care about really is your safety so that's the reason why people have to be careful of things like for example there's times where you know i'm driving and i'll see someone like it doesn't happen often it's happened to me like a couple times if i drive out of my town someplace further um you know somebody will like be waving their hand like they need a ride and there's many times i'd be thinking like i wish i can give this person a ride but i'm like i just don't trust people because i have that type of luck where it seems like when i help people i'm the one who gets who gets like stabbed in the back you know what i'm saying so it's difficult today to even you know try to help people and so that's why i understand why people do the things that they do um and it's just sad like i just feel very sad for the world because of this because you just you that's why i love tools like astrology it's like <laughs> if i have to help somebody i'm like do you know your birth your birth date your birth time where you was born location like everything or else no but then this is good you know to be sort of psychic but not everybody's able to tap into those abilities. And then even if you start to grow these psychic abilities, you have to learn how to apply them. It's like there's a setback to everything. So it's very difficult today to try to do the right thing because you just cannot trust people. You can't, you can't. And these, this is why it's important to be able to pick up on various signs and signals to know when to do the right thing. Because a lot of empaths, they become narcissistic. They become evil they become self-involved because when you are an empath when you are very empathetic like that you care too much about others you try to help people and then what you will notice is that people will stab you in the back and when that happens so many goddamn times you begin to say screw the world i'm only going to care about myself that's what happens you know so you it's this world is crazy but um yeah that's what the bystander effect is and then as i was speaking beforehand is the just world phenomenon which is another type of um concept that has to do with um 
you know what I was saying how people kind of just look at things for how it is and then they're they'll criticize too you know they'll be able to analyze and pick up on this information but they'll further contribute to the issue it's just like you see that this is wrong you see that there's something wrong in this situation but instead of actually saying oh let me not further contribute to this like for example people be the first to complain about you know our society not having enough or things being wasteful and then it'd be the first to not recycle they'll be the first to you know throw everything out and not recycle they'll be the first to litter and destroy their this environment but then they expect to receive gains from the environment how dare you how dare you expect to receive when you treat this earth like trash it doesn't make sense you littered you threw your bottle out the window of the car, but you think that you deserve to win the lottery. I don't get it. And yeah, maybe you get lucky and you win sometimes, but I bet you you lose it just as quick. You can't keep treating things badly and expecting back in return. It doesn't make sense. So the just world phenomenon, it's basically where when people think that because bad things happen to someone, they did something to deserve the bad things. So it's a karmic concept. It's like where you just think that something is the way it is because that's the way it is. So for example, you can take it back to, you know, the concept of racism. Like you think that black people are being treated unfairly because they deserved it. Like it's something that they personally did. Um, or you take it back to the messy, dirty movie theater environment. You think that that movie theater is messy and dirty because it just, that's just the way it is. It's just a messy, dirty, like it just, it just came that way. It just came that way. Like, they built that movie theater dirty. No, it got that way from the people, from from how it was being treated. And maybe from the way it was built. Maybe it was built like trash. And so people then further started to treat it like trash. So it's like, you got to think about, like, why things got to the way that it is. And then kind of try to bring a change to it. Like, I don't get why people will just go into a space they see things they complain about it and then they further contribute to the issue but this is just something that i noticed that occurs even you know myself even though i'm a person who seems to go against the grain quite often you know i am a person that blends in a lot with society i am a pisces a pisces is the sign of being a chameleon so naturally i do blend in with you know society i just do it in a different way um because i do have a lot of critiquing awareness it's just that i'm silent you know a little bit about it i'm one of those people i kind of accept things for you know what it is and then i oftentimes i get woken up and i realize you know where things just aren't right this is the reason why too like i have that vibe of sarcasm because it's like I'm constantly like in like la la land, like la 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 la, and then boom. It's like it just ends and reality just smacks the shit out of me. So I'm constantly going through that, you know, extreme in life. And this is what helps bring awareness to me that I, you know, share out to others because not everyone else is aware of these things where they could be aware of them, but they just can't pinpoint them. I have the gift of being able to really like analyze things. And it really takes like little to no effort because it's the way that my mind works. So, um, and I'm not bragging about it. Everybody has a gift. Okay. I always remember that. I'm just expressing my gift it's not any better or any worse than anybody else's gift everyone has a gift a talent or something you know about them that they can share with the world in some way um doesn't have to be artistic it can simply just be in a mundane way um it just depends on where you're supposed to be in your life like you just got to know your place know who you are blah 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 i'm rambling my point being is that i feel like you know one of the ways that we can really improve our society today is from, you know, in certain circumstances, waking up and starting to sort of see where things could be changed at. And when we feel the need to complain about something, um, to also see where we can bring about change. So if we want to complain about, you know, McDonald's chicken nuggets, which I don't need McDonald's chicken nuggets, but you know, somebody must eat it that he is watching this video. Or I like McDonald's french fries and the hotcakes are pretty good. Um, 
So anyways, like, you know, McDonald's chicken nuggets, every time you get them, you know, you don't really like them anymore. What happened to them? They're not the same. You know, maybe you should tell the manager, like, what's up with y'all chicken nuggets? Because maybe it's only at that place. But let's say you notice it at various McDonald's. Then, you know, you can actually go on McDonald's.com and send in, you know, a complaint or I don't really want to call it a complaint but like voice your opinion like hey I've been getting McDonald's chicken nuggets for years and I've never had a problem with it it's been my favorite I get it with the barbecue sauce what's going on like suddenly for the past couple months every place that I get McDonald's chicken nuggets at every McDonald's that I get these chicken nuggets at it's nasty it's not the same y'all change the recipe what's going on I don't like this new recipe you see the difference between you continuously complaining about these chicken nuggets each time you get them and it's pissing you off each time you get them versus you saying, you know what, let me say something about this because I have that right. That's all I'm saying. You know, a lot of people, they don't want to do the work. They just want to keep complaining. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. After a while, if you really want something to change, you would actually put the effort to bring about that change rather than da -da 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 complaining about stuff all the time. We all do it. I do it too. Eventually, though, I get slapped. Shut the hell up. Spirit slaps the shit out of me. says, stop it. Stop it. Do something about it. And that's what I do. So that's my whole point I'm trying to make in this video. That's the difference between being woke versus being sleep. Okay, when you're woke, you can actually like see what's going on and you start to realize like, oh, shoot. Why am I further contributing to these issues or, oh, this is what I was involved in. Oh, that's the reason why this is this is exists. This is the reason why this is what it is. You start to see the meaning and reasoning behind certain things and then you start to want to actually bring change to these things versus just going along with it and further contributing to the issue then complaining about it but further contributing to the issue <laughs> you see there's like a cycle of just it's like a cycle of um counterintuitiveness it just doesn't make sense so that's the point i want to bring about in this video i hope it was able to sort of you know bring some enlightenment to people and maybe just even just confirm something that you've no been noticing too in some way so thank you for watching please like comment share subscribe peace out